Thanks, guys, and we're getting tuned up for March Madness. Important game in the Big East in Providence, Rhode Island tonight. Fox College Hoops presents the Marquette Golden Eagles taking on the Providence Friars. These are the up-to-the-minute standings in the Big East, and you see the importance of this game. Providence and Marquette battling to join the 10-win teams in the Big East and get a spot for fourth in the Big East. Chris Garrido and Tariq Turner with you here in Providence. It is senior night, and that's a great way to set the tone here because the folks in Providence get their final look at the great senior, one of the best players in the country in Bryce Cox. Well, there's no question. He's been the most complete guard in the Big East, one of the top guards in the country. There's no telling where Providence would be without the contributions of this dynamic guard. Makes plays when his team needs him, put the team on his back the entire year, and he's been a playmaker at the most crucial moment leading the team in scoring and assists. Marquette has had an up and down season. One constant though, Devontae Gardner will come off the bench and he's their leader. Well, he's their physical post presence. He can score from 15 feet and in. Very good off the bounce. When he gets the ball off the block, he's very physical, a big time banger. He gives them a double whammy of points and rebounding and he gives them a point presence that they don't have when he's out of the game. Well, Buzz Williams has tinkered with his starting lineup all year. This is the group that will start the game for Marquette with Thomas, the sharpshooter of that bunch. O'Toole, the big man in the middle. The Friars, they've gone with the same starting lineup every game this season. Bryce Cotton is their leader. Kadeem Batts is the senior out of Boston. Watch him as well. Cotton averaging over 21 points per game. Doubled his assist total from a year ago as he's had to move over and be the playmaker. And Marquette wins the tip as O'Toole has now won 25 of the 29 opening tips that he has been a part of. Nice little nugget. <laughs> there you go, right off the bat, Marquette in the dark blue. Coming off a loss against Villanova on Sunday. Had an opportunity to get one of those real resume building wins. Couldn't get it done though in Philadelphia. Well, this is a crucial game for both teams. They want to get to position themselves to get in the NCAA tournament. Certainly this will give them a great leap. Oh, look at the toughness of Derek Wilson getting his own miss. This is Jameel Wilson. He misses with the shot clock running down. O'Toole there to put it up and in. And the center in his sixth season with Marquette. Two redshirt seasons, numerous issues with injuries over the years. And O'Toole at 24 years old. One of only three players in college basketball who accumulates stats in six different seasons. Marquette opens it man-to-man. -man. Obviously, Bryce Cotton is the focal point on the perimeter. Watch the way Marquette defends him off the ball screen. Very good at getting in the paint for Cotton is. That's going to work inside. And they're going to call it an offensive foul there against Bats to get a look at. Well, this is going to be a physical game. A lot of contact down low right here. Bats just lowers his shoulder. O'Toole did a nice job to sell that call, didn't he? Yeah, well, he did, and he was in position. He had his feet set and his hands high. Good rotation by the big man. Derek Wilson, the junior, took over as a starter this year. Down low, O'Toole. O'Toole trying to use his size to overwhelm Providence, and he does for a second straight possession. Well, the, the point for, for Marquette is to get the ball in the paint. They want to use their size. O'Toole off to a good start, not known as a scorer, but they're looking for him early. He only averages six points a game. He's got the first four. This is Cotton, the 6'1 senior. Bats. Hits. And the folks here at the Dunkin' Donut Center can sit down. They wait till the first bucket. Now they take a seat. And both teams want to get their bigs going early. Bats, a little more versatile, can step out and knock down that 15-footer to bring O'Toole away from the basket. And this is going to be an offensive foul against Marquette. Well, Marquette has dominated this series so far. They've won 10 straight. Last Providence win in 2007. Providence went to the tournament the last time in 2004. But you have to go back to 1997, the last time they had success, but they were beaten by a Marquette team in the NCAA tournament in 1997. Hinton, three, and it's good. Well, Dante Hinton's a 35% shooter from behind the arc. And Hinton's not a, known as a jump shooter, but when he gets his feet set in rhythm, he can knock it down. Proven is off to a good start without putting the pressure on Cotton to score the ball early. We mentioned Marquette won 10 straight in this series, including the game on January 30th 
Got out to a 31 to 14 lead at the half. Ended up winning by 11. Here's Juan Anderson. Off the glass, kept alive by Providence. They've got it. Cotton forcing the issue. Rejected by Thomas. And we'll watch Hinton, who does a good job of moving without the ball, always in motion, does a good job of popping out and too much airspace. And then Cotton comes down, looking to put the pressure on the defense. Good help side D by Thomas with the block. Carson DeRozier going to check into the game now for Providence. As Pats takes a seat. Here's Cotton. Fortune. They work it around up top. Cotton. Fortune. Missing on a three. DeRozier kept it alive. Providence can't hit. Marquez going to look to push the tempo and run selectively, especially off of long rebounds. Buzz Williams. A long-time coach now, Marquette is sixth season. The jacket is on for now. That jacket will come off soon. One of the more intense coaches in the Big East. And he gets his leading scorer into the game now, Devontae Gardner. And the game will change in terms of focal point with Gardner on the floor. He's their best interior scorer, leads them in scoring in the paint. And a block by DeRozier. He's second in the Big East in block. Starts a break. Fortune can't hit. Marquette the other way. This is Mayo who's entered the game. Todd Mayo, brother of NBA star O.J. Mayo. Out top, Thomas. Marquette, not a great three-point shooting team. Only 31%, but Thomas, number 23 in blue, is the guy to watch from deep. Wilson setting up Gardner. Going to work inside. Big step. Missed it inside. A lot of contact, no call. A good defense by DeRozier who cut him off and forced him baseline into the help side causing him to take an, a contested tough layup. Gardner was held to just eight points in their loss to Villanova. Prior to that, though, a 26-point performance this year against Georgetown where all his points are in the paint. Cotton hit as he goes into the shooting motion. A foul on Derek Wilson. A very dangerous Cotton in one-on-one -on -one situations with the herky-jerky hesitation dribble allows him to create space and get a shot off. Big game in the Big East. Providence, the early lead. night here in Providence Ted Bancroft Reese Kofani the senior Lee Goldsboro out of England and there's Kadeem Batch one of the thousand point scorers and of course Bryce Cotton very well could be the best player in the Big East if Doug McDermott wasn't around for Creighton you see the seniors being honored and Bryce Cotton going to the free throw line right now and one more free throw to tie Marvin Barnes for fifth on Providence's all-time scoring list. And when you look at a senior night, the, 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 the special thing about it is you want to send your guys out on a high note. There is some pressure along with that because sometimes you press too much and, and you lose sight on what the game plan is. But the thing about this team is so far, they've come out balanced. The focus is there, and they're getting good shots so far in the first few minutes. And Cotton, an 85% free throw shooter, hits the first. And and what I mean by balance is, you know, you don't want Bryce Cotton to take all the shots. You don't want him to be the most aggressive guy early on. So far, he's setting his teammates up. He's gotten some other guys good looks, and then he picks his spots for when to be aggressive. And now moves to fifth place on the all-time scoring list for Providence College, passing Marvin Barnes. Providence drops into a 2-3 zone. They want to use this defense to protect the paint and keep the ball from going down low. Gardner, double dribble. Providence. Second turnover. Expect a lot of defensive switches in both teams mixing it up from man to man to zone. A little full court pressure now, three quarter court by Marquette. Cotton gets it across. Cotton, one of the 30 on the Naismith watch list this year. He's played 50 minutes in a game three times in his career. He leads the Big East in minutes played with overtimes averaging over 41 minutes a game. Here's Harris going to work inside. And Thomas the rebound for Marquette. This is Derek Wilson. Thomas out. Thomas, 39% three-point shooter. Hasn't gotten a look yet. And nice pass inside from Deontay Burton. 
Finding Gardner inside. That's the high-low action. That's the way you attack a zone. They get it into the high post to Burton with a nice dump down low for the high percentage shot. Burton coming off a 13-point performance to lead Marquette against Villanova in the loss on Sunday. That's back in. Hinton's got it now for Providence in the white. Providence running their flex offense, which is a combination of cross screens and down screens. Perfect pass, perfect execution. They want to get the ball down low to bats and high percentage scoring opportunities. Providence the early lead. Mayo. Burton spinning and rebounded by Hinton. That shot was rushed. Good defensive presence on the back line of that 2-3 zone by Providence, forcing a rush shot. In the half court, Bryce Cotton is going to have the ball in his hands the majority of the time, but they like that dribble handoff weave to get some penetration. Excellent Dante Hinton scoring inside. He's got five points, and Providence with a five-point lead. Had it stripped, it'll remain Marquette ball. Here's what Marquette wants to do. They want to get it into the gaps, particularly that high post action. Nice high-low pass down to Gardner. And here we'll see good ball screen action, a cross screen. It leaves bats wide open for an easy one. Marquette at 17 and 12 this year. It's an interesting game here, Trick, because it doesn't seem like the winner will benefit as Wilson had it knocked out of bounds. But the loser, well, they're definitely going to be on the outside looking in for an NCAA tournament berth. Well, well this is as much of a must-win situation as you could draw up in terms of moving up the ranks, creating some separation, kind of getting that fourth spot in the Big East rankings one step closer to the NCAA tournament berth. Nearly a turnover. Mayo keeps it. Gardner. Good defense inside by DeRozier. And what they did is they played, they made Gardner go into a crowd. You want to use the length and size of DeRozier and Bat's high hands to make him take contested shots. Gardner's off to a rough start offensively so far. Providence lost their first two Big East games this year. Then one of a five-game winning streak, including a win over Creighton. Recently, a double overtime loss against Villanova. Right now, looking for their 20th win of the year for the first time since 2004. It was also the last time they went to the NCAA tournament. And that's the senior on senior night. Puts Providence up 13 to 6 after falling behind 4 0. And that's good recognition by Providence to get the ball to their big man. He's in a good rhythm. He had a mismatch with a 6 10 size over the smaller Dawson. Active zone, high hands, getting deflections. Marquette has not shown that they can handle this 2-3 zone with the exception of the high-low pass to Gardner earlier. They have not gotten any good shots versus the 2-3. Fortune taking it against John Dawson, who's checked in. Cotton, three. Go! That's a big-time shot. He kind of rocks you to sleep with that left to right crossover and creates enough space to get the shot up over the defense. Big-time play by a big-time player. There he is, left to right. Boom. Big East crown. And Tariq, you don't have to win five in a row to win the Big East tournament coming up. You only have to win three. These two teams may need a big Big East tournament to get to the NCAA tournament as you look at the stats in the early going here. No question, they both have work to do. This is one step closer and they can get their 10th conference win tonight. Gardner got fouled by Fortune. First foul on Fortune. Gardner, who is an excellent foul shooter, very crafty, but also strong and physical enough to bull his way to the basket, but as also has the footwork to step out and knock down the 15-footer. He's a mismatch problem, but so far, early on, I've been impressed with the way Providence has made him work for everything. 
Gardner makes the free throw. Coming back into the game is Derek Wilson, replacing John Dawson. Steve Taylor going to check into the game, replacing Jake Thomas. Thomas has not gotten going. He's their three-point threat. Their only three-point threat, really. You know, Marquette's philosophy offensively is they want to get paint touches. They want to get the ball down low to their bigs, either through post entry or penetration and passing. And so far, Providence with the 2-3 zone has done a pretty good job of keeping them from scoring down low. Providence on the other end obviously has a little bit more balance with the guard play of Cotton and Hinton on the outside and then bats down low operating. They've been ushering bats in DeRozan back and forth. Those are the only two substitutions you'll see for Providence. Bats getting checked, getting set to check back into the game. The starters account for 93% of their offense. Cotton a lot of it, but he can't hit there. And that was a set play. Good backdoor cut. Tough finish. Jamil Wilson running it down. Called a timeout. Jamil Wilson saving the possession with the timeout call. And Buzz Williams not happy about something with the officials. There you see the coat is off. It only took to the 10:48 mark, but the coat is off. Marquette, a team with a lot of depth. You see 11 players average double figures in minutes. Nine different players have started two or more games. Seven players averaging over five points a game. You look at depth, a lot of it, Buzz Williams has tried to figure out what combinations work. And as, so talking to the staff at Marquette, that's been the toughest challenge. Finding a rotation that is effective, whether it's your starting five or your, your guys coming off the bench. And obviously, Gardner, <laughs> The Garner comes off the bench as a scorer, but he plays starters minutes with his production. Fox College Hoops returns next as Arizona State takes on Oregon. Good coverage beginning after our game right here on Fox Sports 1 and Fox Sports Go. Chris Carino and Tariq Turner with you. Dave Gavitt Court, a longtime great Providence coach. As Marquette has it in the dark blue. Underneath, that's going to be a jump. A possession arrow favors Providence. Another, another great job rotating defensively. The 2-3 zone. They're making the bigs of Marquette play in the crowd. DeRozier has been a factor with his length and his size at 7 feet. DeRozier averages 2.5 blocks per game. That's second in the Big East. He's already got one clean block and then that one there. He's also defended well in the paint. DeRozier, a junior, started at Wake Forest. Transfer to Providence. New Hampshire native. Here's a three that won't go from Fortune. And Wilson for Marquette. Fortune has not hit these shots yet, but he's been aggressive a lot more in the last five, six games. I think that can help Providence when they play off of Cotton. He's going to be wide open for some open looks. Marquette working it around. Jamil Wilson. O'Toole bottled up to Rozier. Another great job. The bigs of Marquette have had trouble finishing near the rim. A lot of that has to do with the defensive presence intensity of the front line guys of Providence. Bats and DeRozier came ready to play tonight. Bats. A handoff for Cotton. Two-time Big East player of the week this season. Cotton goes down low. Bats in traffic. Can't hit O'Toole. Comes away with it for Marquette. Now Wilson. Mayo, bottled up. Tenacious defense by Providence. Well, There's making, a kickball by Bats. Well, what they're doing is they're cutting off the driving angles of Marquette and making them take it to the other side and rotate. And then they're down low. They're contesting everything around the rim, causing Marquette to not really get in a rhythm yet on the half-court offense. They get Jake Thomas back into the game, replacing Jameel Wilson. This is Thomas. Here's a little mini trap by Providence off the first pass. They like to do this out of dead ball situation. Off. And that's what I'm talking about, changing defenses. That's a little wrinkle that Ed Cooley likes to do out of dead ball situations, a kind of a run and jump where they surprise the offensive player. Thomas was not expecting the double team, turns it over. That is the fourth Marquette turnover here in the first half. Bryce Cotton 
Second in scoring, first in assist to the Big East. The Rozier down to Bats. Hits. And again, the interior passing, the post presence of Bats. A nice little duck in for a nice 5 15 footer. Eight for Kadeem Bats. Inside. Oh, oh two lay foul. Well, we'll watch how Bats seals his man. Does a great job of command commanding the ball. Gets low and uses his lift and touch over the top. The Rozier with a perfect bounce pass that leads him into a shot. That's good half-court offense. Averages 12.7 a game, and he's got eight here. Now Otule at the line. A 54% free throw shooter. The foul was on DeRozier, his first. And you talked about it earlier, Chris. Uh, Otule doesn't score the ball, only averages about five or six points. Getting more touches early on in this game than we've seen in a while. Mm -hmm. And he's been the focal point of their half-court offense with the way they've taken away Gardner and Wilson. O'Toole in his sixth season on campus. Two medical red shirts. Makes the second free throw. O'Toole played just 12 games in his first two seasons. A foot injury two seasons ago where he played eight games. Born with a serious condition where he lost his left eye. He has a prosthetic left eye. He wears the goggles, number 42, in dark blue because it protects the good eye. Bats rejected by Wilson. What a block. You see the athleticism. Wilson came from the weak side and blocked that with his left hand. Thomas. Ooh. And Burton scoring inside. Deontay Burton off the nice drive and dish from Jake Thomas. Burton is a scorer off the bench. Gives him some offensive presence with his ability to slash and finish around the rim. Providence maintaining the five-point lead. Cotton missing on a three. Otule runs down the miss. Derek Wilson. Jamil Wilson down to Burton. Burton swallowed up. Still loose. Scrum comes away to Jamil Wilson. I think these teams want to win. Look at the hustle. Look at the intensity by both teams. Camille Wilson, tough shot, got it to go. That was nice. Wilson, athletic, gets into the paint. He loves to get both feet in the paint with a nice touch, getting his rhythm going. Averages 12 points a game. That's his first points here tonight, and that's going to be a backcourt violation. So Providence turns it over. Marquette a slow start, but they're fighting back. And, and Wilson starting to pick his game up. First it was the block from the weak side, and then on offense, Gets right in the paint with a nice slash and dribble move and the finish. Marquette on a 9-2 run to get back within three of Providence. But for the Friars, it's been the senior, Kadeem Bats, leading the way. Well, he's been active from the beginning of the game, looking for a shot with the face up and also down low, sealing this man, coming up with cross greens. Strong physical play. He has been the go-to guy down low, and that is a good sign for Providence when you have that balance with the guard play. The senior from Boston went to high school in Georgia, held just four points against Marquette in their previous meeting on January 30th. Coming off a 14-point game in their last game, a win over Seton Hall on Friday. Providence won three of four after a three-game losing streak. Bass, you see, four of six on the floor, eight points here in the first half. You know, both teams have gone through adversity as any team has throughout the year. Obviously, Providence started out the season without their point guard, Chris Dunn, and they had to kind of, you know, make moves on the fly and adjust and move Cotton to the point guard. Everyone had to move over one position. Ed Cooley's done a great job of adjusting midseason to get this team to play at a high level. And uses those five starters most of the game. We talked about Cotton. 12 of the last 14 games, Cotton has played every second of the game. This zone has been stifling at times here in the first half. And that's another reason why Cooley is playing zone. It gives, uh, gives Cotton a few seconds to rest and not exert as much energy. Burton the miss, rebounded by Hinton. 
Cotton looking to finish out the year. One of five major conference players ever to average over 20 points and over five assists per game. He doubled his assist total this season, as you mentioned, taking over the point guard duties, but maintained his scoring over 21 points a game. And tonight moving into fifth place all time in Providence's list of all time scorers. Now Fortune saves it from going out of bounds. Harris got undercut and then it called foul against Marquette. Well, we've been talking about the seniors on senior night. Cotton and Bats both over a thousand points in their history. And when you have good seniors, it allows your coach to trust you and allow you to be the leaders on the court. And certainly, Ed Cooley is happy to have these seniors and sad to see them leave because they've been a big part of the success of this Providence program. Ed Cooley in his third season with Providence, he inherited those two guys. But Cotton was seldom used. He'd probably be the leading scorer in Providence history. He only scored about 150 points his freshman year. Now he came in a little kind of under the radar. You know, you knew he was talented, but you, you know, you, you, ha you cannot tell anyone or ask anyone if they expected him to be the player he sure. is now if you would have seen him as a freshman. There's Bats again. Now he continues to shoot the ball well, and he can pull the bigs away from the basket, which makes it easier for them to play down low. Want to get this screen and roll going. Bats showing that versatility. No senior night jitters for Bats. He's got 10. Inside, Burton. And scoring. That's his move. He's a 6'4", undersized power forward, but loves that jump hook in the paint with the left. Four points for Burton, who's emerging as a bit more of a scorer than he had been earlier in the season. 13 off the bench on Sunday. Cotton. We talked about Ed Cooley's affinity for Cotton. And he inherited him. Cotton's only Division I scholarship offer was here at Providence. And now their fifth all-time leading scorer. And there's LaDante Hinton going to work inside. Good rotation by Hinton who gets the wide open elbow jumper, but it came because of the double team on Bats who did a good job of passing out the double to the open man. Mayo, three. Can't connect. Gardner's checked in, gets the rebound. Camille Wilson hits on a wide open three. He can make that shot 32% this season. And Wilson's starting to get himself going. You've seen the versatility. He gets in the paint a few minutes ago with the runner, and now he's stretching the defense with the three ball. That's deflected by Marquette out of bounds. It remains Providence ball. And here again, we see the high screen with Bats and Cotton. A nice little pick and pop, and Bats feeling good with his feet set. He screens and then he pops. Instead of rolling, the defense too slow to react. Nice little pull up. Bats had his eighth double double this season on Friday in their win against Seton Hall, 14 points and 11 rebounds. Providence, 21 on the shot clock. Hinton, three. Got it. Another big time shot by Hinton. Nice execution. Off the screen on the out of bounds. He slips the screen. He's wide open for an on, another three. And he's got 10. Been bats and Hinton so far for Providence. On Anderson back in. Cut off. Mayo, three. Knocks it down, and Marquette, not known as a three-point shooting team, but two for three here in the first half. And they need him to score the ball. He's a, another guy that can come off the bench, give them double-figure scoring, a versatile guard, likes to slash, but can also pull up when he gets his feet set. Providence led by as much as 10. Back when it was 16 to 6, now a two-point game. Cotton, three. He was looking for some contact. Rebounded by Burton for Marquette. Excellent defense by Marquette, forcing him into a tough shot. That's a strip before the shot attempt. Marquette firing back. A three has them within two. Yeah, Don, that was a couple of losses in a row now by Creighton in the Big East. We take a look at tonight's game summary. It was Chris O'Toole scoring the first four points of this game, but then the Friars went on a run, took a 10-point lead, but Kadeem Bats has been pacing them. You see Marquette 
the rebound advantage and Marquette though that was down 10 finds themselves within two. Marquette's going to continue to pound the ball down low, get their paint touches, whether it's a post feed or penetration from their wings. Jamil Wilson is starting to get going. You can sense that he's going to start being more aggressive going into this last stretch of the, ha of the half. Now a ball loose, and Providence comes up with another Marquette turnover, the fifth for the Golden Eagles. Now Providence here on the white. This is Cotton. Now on the floor, DeRozier trying to save it. They get tied up. He is tied up. And that's, possession arrow favors Marquette. That's a good job by Marquette, extending their defense. They're now trying to deny those wings and make it difficult for Providence to get into the half-court offense with that post entry. The best way you do that is deny and pressure the ball to keep the offense from getting, getting an angle to pass the ball down low. Ed Cooley working the officials as Gardner comes back in for Buzz Williams. You know, I think this game, sorry, Chris, this game is going to come down to point presence and who can get multiple stops because the offense is going to be in, in spurts. And I think right now you're seeing both teams switch their defenses up to try to keep the offense off balance. Neil Wilson, Mayo penetrating to Rozier. Forced him to stop his progress. Crowd wanted a traveling call. Don't get it. Jamil Wilson can't hit. And Cotton, the smallest guy on the floor, grabs the rebound. And that's what you want if you're, uh, you're, you're Providence. A, a pull up jump shot that's contested. And Henton's going to go to the line. Well, this week, NASCAR heads to Las Vegas for the Cobalt 400 as Jimmy Johnson looks to defend his title. Our covers begin Sunday at 2.30. That's 2.30 p.m. Eastern, only on Fox. It's Fox Sports Go. The free throw is good, 11 points for LaDante Hinton. You know, Hinton is so important to this team, and he kind of gets lost in the shuffle sometimes when you look at what he's done. Another 1,000-point scorer, only a junior. Everyone talks about Cotton and Bats, rightfully so, but Hinton is that third wheel of their offensive core, and he does a good job of mixing his game up off to a strong start in the first half. Usually it's no fun being a third wheel, but when you're talking about third wheel, the cotton and bats, that'll right. work out pretty good. And he'll be the senior leader next year. And, and you know what? He's comfortable with that. He doesn't want to be the man. He wants to win. And, you know, talking to him before the game, he knows how important this game is. He wants to send his senior guys off, cotton and bats, with the victory. Now inside, this is John Dawson, the freshman. Pass on the wing, deflected. It'll remain Marquette ball. Here are the 1,000-point scores for Providence. Three of them, the two seniors, Cotton and Bats, with, and then we were just talking about, LaDante Hinton, the junior. Marquette. Gardner scoring inside. That's one of the first early, a few early looks we've seen. Good post entry pass into that short corner to Gardner, who's a target with his size and good hands. Six for their leading scorer, Devontae Gardner. Again, Marquette within two. Cotton finds backs three. Don't go. That's exactly what you want if you Marquette. You want Bats taking a contested three. That's not his game. Dawson three. Can't hit. DeRozier kept it alive. Cotton racing. Cotton to the rim. And turned it over. Great job defensive transition by Marquette. Mayo gets it to crawl in. And this game is tied. So both Mayo and Garner have come off the bench and given this Marquette team a lift with their scoring presence. And Mayo is starting to be a, stabi a, a stabilizing force on both ends as we see a nice pass versus the zone. You want to get into those gaps. Nice pass into that short corner, which is one of the more effective places to attack a 2-3 along with the high post. And here Mayo in transition. Very good off the bounce in mid-range. Avoids the charge with the pull-up jumper. Well, talking about this game, Ed Cooley, the coach of Providence, said the two things that concerned him were Marquette's ability to score in the paint and the transition defense. And that's exactly 
what came to fruition in those two baskets. That's exactly right. And those are the two focal points coming into this game. If you know about Marquette, you know they want to push the ball selectively. And Mayo certainly one of their better guys at pushing and finishing. And then in the half court, they want to get the ball down low and punish you with their physical presence in the paint. Two teams that are wobbling on the bubble right now. And Providence had as much as a 10-point lead. Marquette has stormed back. It's our first tie of the first half. Well, this is Buzz Williams basketball. It's not going to be pretty. It's going to be in spurts. And what they do is they try to win on the defensive end, ugly the game up with their physical play, and press and take you out of your comfort zone. Tyler Harris hands back to Cotton. Under a minute to play in the first half. This is Harris of Dix Hills, Long Island. Looking around. DeRozier. Bats against Gardner. The kick out, the three, no good. And run down by Otule. Another great job in the half court offense. The last two possessions by Marquette, very solid. Forcing Providence to take a contested three. And now they get the hole for the last possession. Well, there's about a three second different shot to game clock right now. You know, in situations like this, you want to use your skill guys, obviously, Gardner. And Wilson being the main guys on the floor right now, along with Mayo. Mayo got bumped by Harris and a foul. Well, that's not a bad foul because both teams have fouls to give. And if I'm Providence, you recognize that, hey, you have one more foul to give before you put Marquette in the one-on-one. -on -one. Ted Bancroft, a senior checking into the game. And Thomas, the sharpshooter for Marquette, replaces Otule. Thomas makes almost half of Marquette's threes. He's yet to hit one tonight. He gets it here, an open look. And can't hit with five seconds to go. Hinton, long two, and it goes at the horn. That's a big momentum changer. You go into the half. With the lead, big time play by Hinton with the recognition off the rebound. A nice push, avoids the charge, and pulls up, knocks it down. A big first half for Ladante Hinton. He's got 14 points. Providence takes the lead at the break. Don Bell and Austin Crozier standing by in our L.A. studios. Big East basketball at its best. March Madness on Fox. Providence with a big bucket late in the half. They take a two-point lead after leading by as much as 10. And you look at why this game is so important in the Big East. Two teams looking for their 10th win of the conference. The winner will have the edge of the four spot in the Big East standings. They see Villanova and Creighton still in the league. Creighton losing its second in a row tonight, losing to Georgetown in the first game of our doubleheader here on Fox. Well, Tariq Turner, that first half, we talked about this being senior night here at Providence, and there should be a game that would be dominated by the seniors, and that's exactly what happened in the first half. But well, they're standing out, and obviously they're playing with a sense of urgency. They know what this game means. Obviously, there's a lot at stake. Talk about trying to get into that fourth spot. Garner's been the active guy down low. And then Wilson, the two seniors getting into the paint has been their strength. They've dominated that aspect of the game. On the other end, Bass has been phenomenal. Got them going early in the paint, stepping out, knocking down some jump shots. And then hitting with this slashing ability, getting into the paint, making that runner, giving him a third score along with Cotton. Well, Hinton, the junior, had 14 points. Bats had 10, and Cotton had 5. Only three players scored for Providence. And you see Cotton became the fifth all-time leading scorer in Providence College history, passing the great Marvin Barnes. Friars 16-3 when leading at the half, and 10-0 here at the dunk. Uh, Dave Gavitt Court, Dunkin' Donut Center in Providence. We're underway to start the second half at a crucial Big East showdown. Here's Providence in the white. It's Tyler Harris. Cotton. 
Here's Fortune. Cotton has not dominated this game, Tariq, averaging over 21 points a game. What did you see in the first well, we've half? We've seen several games when he started out in the first half, five or six points, and then go off in the second half. Expect him to be more aggressive, but Marquette making him dribble into a crowd with good outside defense. Hinton missing a three, kept alive, and taken away. Hinton inside, rejected by Otule, and saved by Jameel Wilson. And now Marquette with their first possession of the second half. Now, Tule's been active on both ends of the court. Offensively, he got them going down low. And defensively, you know what he brings with his size and his shot blocking ability. Wilson. Thomas hasn't gotten going. He's their three-point threat. Providence still in that 2-3 zone. They're trying to roam Wilson at that high post area. Anderson rejected inside. And then Otule had it rejected. Physical game. Nothing is going uncontested to the rim. Boy, this is some Big East defense being played. Well, they're both physical, and this is going to be a war. You see Otule with the block, and then Harris comes right back and says, look, I'm going to pay you back. Oh, nice feed inside, and Harris scores his first points. Harris goes straight to the rim on the out of bounds. No one stepped in front of him. Wilson. And a blocking foul against Bats. You see the theme of this game so far is everything's going to the rim. And there's nothing coming easy. Everything's being earned. Wilson, the point guard, not known for scoring, but he will pick his spots. Good decision by the point guard to put the pressure on the defense. What else would you expect out of these two teams this late in the season? Uh, you one more game remaining in the Big East for these two teams. Yeah, this is a do or die game. I mean, obviously, Providence. This gives them a 20th win if they get this. It puts them in the 10-win column. And their last game is at Creighton on senior night, and you know who's going to be fired up for that. McDermott and Rogge, after coming off a loss to Georgetown, that's a tough place to go into. Marquette on the other end, they're trying to get another win and go back to the home stretch versus St. John's this weekend. And Creighton coming off two straight losses now, right? They lost to Xavier and then tonight to Georgetown. Two missed free throws by Derek Wilson, a poor free throw shooter. Something to remember late. He's a 46% shooter from the line. Now this is Cotton for Providence. Bat stumbling and scoring. Good job. Good read by Bass off the screen and roll. Bass made himself a target. Flash to the high post. That makes a nice play to the rim. Mayo driving and knifing and scoring inside. Well, he's been aggressive. He's looking to score the ball. He's a guy that hunts shots, does a good job using that first step to score on the baseline. Big second half scorer as well as Todd Mayo. He's got seven in this game. Four-point lead for the Friars. Fortune open. Can't hit. And Marquette with a rebound. Fortune has not been able to knock down any shots, but he's got clean looks. Thomas. Still can't hit Jamil Wilson. Otule, a third chance. Marquette still fighting for it. Otule inside, and we get a foul against Providence. Wow. It's a physical game. I mean, there's a lot of contact, a lot of bodies flying all over the place. Here we'll see Bats on the screen. Rosen was a pressure release guy for Cotton, who was double teamed, made himself a target, catches and finishes. The third foul on Fortune. Thomas for Marquette. And this 2-3 zone has forced Marquette to use Wilson at that high post area. He's their most versatile big. Can step out and face up. Thomas, Jameer Wilson, can't hit, got his own miss. And he got blocked by the underside of the backboard. Bad angle by Wilson, and good defense by Bats, keeping his hands high without fouling. And Bats handling, getting into the front court. And now Cotton will set it up. And Wilson is all over Cotton. He's pressuring him, going over the screen, forcing him. Collision inside. And Bats is down. And how, many bodies on have we seen? how many bodies have we seen on the court so far? Yeah. I mean, this is a physical game. As Fortune sets the cross screen, they get tangled up. It's Big East basketball. Yeah. The ball boys are busy. Because every time a guy goes on the floor, they go out there with the towel. Four-point lead for Providence. 
Marquette won the first meeting between these two teams this season back on January 30th. They won 10 straight in the series, and now a whistle and a foul against Wilson. It'll be interesting to watch Providence's fatigue. Obviously, they don't play a lot of guys. You know, their starting five play over 90 percent of the minutes. DeRoja is really the only guy off the bench. Starters account for 93 percent of their scoring. Here's Bats. And a foul will go against Jameel Wilson. Great spacing by Providence. They gave Bats enough room to operate and do his thing on one-on-one -on -one coverage. That allowed him to create and draw the foul. Bats can't hit. Jameel Wilson, the easy rebound for the Golden Eagles. Looking to push it here. And there's a turnover. And a foul against Carter. Now, uh, excuse me, Derek Wilson, and he's picked up his third foul. That's a big foul. You know, Wilson set a moving screen. They tried to set a dribble handoff. Yep. And that was kind of a flop, but, you know, I don't, I'm not sure if that was an offensive foul. Wilson not happy, and that kind of, could be a momentum changer. Mm -hmm. With Wilson picking up his third foul, he's your primary ball handler at the point guard. They're going to keep him out there. They're trying to get Gardner in. And see, if I'm Bryce Cotton, I'm putting the pressure on Wilson to continue to move him off of ball screens to try to get him to pick up his fourth foul. Yeah, he means so much to Marquette. He's had 24 assists to six turnovers in recent games. And there's a three. LaDonte hit. He's got 17. And he's in a great rhythm, wide open. That play was created off the defensive attention that they put on Cotton. Cotton makes the extra pass and hitting in a good rhythm. Marquette, Mayo calms it down with a nice driving bucket. And Mayo continues to get to the rim, doing a good job of splitting the gap with the dribble penetration. Nine for Todd Mayo. Now Cotton looking to put his stamp on this game on senior night, his final game here at the Dunkin' Donuts Center. And Harris traveled that time, and Providence turns it over. And we'll see Hinton continue to shoot the ball in motion. Good ball movement, nice kick out by Cotton. Wide open, knocks it down. Cotton Candy, that's for Bryce Cotton, the senior on senior night for Providence. Friars with a five-point lead. And this has been Big East defense on display here in Rhode Island. Where well, everything's being contested and everything is being challenged. Because these both these teams like to go to the rim, there's an emphasis on rotating and help side defense. A lot of these blocks have come from guys rotating over, doing a good job of using their length, getting a piece of the ball without fouling. Jamil Wilson and Marquette. Jamil Wilson has 5.7 rebounds in this game. Marquette with a 25 to 16 rebounding edge over the Friars. Friars don't led by as much as 10. In a game that is of so much importance for these two teams. Not so much that a win does anything for their resumes, but a loss will be crushing. And there's another block shot that time from Bats. Leads to a break. Henton's got 17 to lead Providence. Cotton inside of DeRozier, and he threw it away. Bad angle by Cotton. It was the right thought, but you need to take a better angle to get that ball down low to DeRozier. Both teams with seven turnovers. Gardner, their leading scorer off the bench, comes into the game now again for Marquette. Derek Wilson. They work it down, and another block shot, but a foul is called against Pax. Well, this is a great example of high-low action. Here we'll see a nice bounce pass through the gap, but Bats comes from behind using his length at 6'9 to get a piece of the ball. Eight block shots for Providence, but that was a foul. It's the third against Kadeem Bats. Camille Wilson, a 68% free throw shooter, connects on the first. Ted Bancroft going to check into the game for Providence, replacing Bats. They don't like to go too deep. And forced to right now with the third against Kadeem Bats. Yeah, Bancroft is a guy that gives you spot minutes. They're not looking for much from him just to kind of spell some of the guys that are in foul trouble for a few minutes. And, and be solid. Wilson makes the second. Seven points 
for Jamil Wilson. Marquette is showing this full court press several times throughout the game, not necessarily to steal the ball. They want to make Providence struggle. And a steal by Wilson to the other end. And Derek Wilson can't hit the layup. Well, that was a great effort by Cotton to chase him down and cut him off, give him a bad angle to get to the rim to make up for that turnover. Distracted him. Bancroft over to Cotton. DeRozier screen finds him rolling, and he can't finish. Marquette saves it. Are you going to finish that? You have to. I mean, there's so many, there's so few opportunities to get to the rim uncontested. You've got to take advantage of it. Like I'm watching the movie Diner. Remember that line? Oh! Another one can't finish inside. Are you going to finish the sandwich? Oh, man, you that's a classic. Sandwich? Nobody wants to finish the sandwich right now. <laughs> Cotton. Cotton inside. That's just oh, that's great. a tough Big East bucket from Cotton. You can't play better defense than Wilson did. He almost picked up his fourth, but Cotton using great body control to finish that shot. And, you know, Cotton is going to continue to probe the defense off the dribble. Good touch off the glass. It's time for our New York Life Keep Good Going stat. And it's Bryce Cotton. He becomes the fifth all-time leading scorer in Providence. You see the assist numbers. He's led the Big East in the last two seasons. His minutes lead the nation. He's averaging over 41 minutes in the Big East with overtime games. And then Marvin Barnes, the man he passed for fifth place on the all-time list. Marvin Barnes, the great but troubled player. He's played for the St. Louis Spirits. Sure, yeah. he could, sure, he had a great story about him. One time they had to go from a flight from Louisville back home to St. Louis. And you know, you gotta change the time zone there. And the Itura said he was leaving at eight, getting in at 7.57. <laughs> he ended up renting a car and driving because he said, I ain't getting no time machine. <laughs> and, uh, Providence. They're going to foul in the backcourt. Dawson, who scored off the bench, then commits a foul. That'll be the first foul on him. Well, the thing to keep an eye on now is, you know, Marquette has 16 fouls, and that's a positive for Providence because the next foul will put them in a one-on-one. -on -one. This is the best foul shooting team in the nation at about 79%. Bose holds up color-coded cards to call out his defenses. This is light blue. Providence back into their flex offense. Cross screens and down screens trying to get something down low in the paint. If not, ball screen action with Bryce Cotton to create offense. Cotton three, got hit, he'll shoot three. And that's a perfect opportunity for Cotton to get a little bit more momentum. You can tell he's starting to look for a shot more as the game winds down. He hasn't really been aggressive, more of a playmaker setting his guys up. But this is money time for him. As the game closes in, he's going to start pushing the tempo a little bit more for his own shot. Yeah, you saw his numbers that have increased his scoring numbers each and every season in Providence. We mentioned not a highly recruited player. This was his one Division I scholarship offer. He only averaged over four points a game in his freshman year. And then it coolly took over as the coach. And Cotton has arrived as the leader, one of the best players in the nation. And fifth all-time leading scorer now in Providence history. And he reminds me of Eddie House, you know, the small guard who played a combo, one and the two. Also from Arizona, went to Arizona State, played in the NBA for about 10 years. Similar kind of style of play at about 6-1. 10 for Cotton. Eddie House never saw a shot he didn't like. Uh, he wasn't shot. Here's Dawson. Here's Burton. This is Mayo. And Mayo can't hit. Cotton. Hinton, three. Marquette the rebound. Strong rebound by the guard, John Dawson. Burton. The drive. Strong bucket and a foul. Yeah, that's a big time move by the freshman who's a 6'4 bull. He's always going left. That's the scout report, and he knows no one can stop him going left. Strong drive with the contact. He was 5 for 7 in the second half on Sunday in the loss to Villanova, the Milwaukee native, Deontay Burton, as Derek Wilson checks back in. 
Burton, the freshman, Dawson, the freshman, a peek, a glimpse into the future for Buzz Williams. He's an undersized small forward slash power forward that loves to drive the ball and attack the rim. 66% free throw shooter, but completes the three-point play. Providence maintaining this lead. With Marquette's depth off the bench, they certainly don't have as much concern about fatigue. They've got numerous guys to step up off the bench. Mayo, Burton, and obviously Gardner, who plays more like a starter. Hinton. Marquette the rebound. Dawson. This is Wilson, excuse me. Derek Wilson. Now Mayo. Jamil Wilson. Burton inside, scoring and one again. Another great job of working that baseline by Burton into that short corner. He takes the contact and, you know, versus the zone. That's how you want to attack. Get to that short corner, kind of snuck behind the back line of the defense, running baseline and gets to an open space. He mentioned undersized. He's six foot four. He's kind of got the mindset of a power forward. Yep. It sort of fits the mold of some of the greats from Marquette over the years. Tough, undersized ball players. We get a foul. You're exactly right. I mean, think about the Marquette prototype player. Look at a Lazar Hayward, a Jimmy Butler, a Jay Crowder. All kind of hybrid guys, not one defined position. You put Burton right in that category. So the Golden Eagles over the limit. And at the line now is Cotton. He'll get another. Well, tomorrow night, Fox College Hoops returns as third-ranked Arizona battles Oregon State with coverage beginning at 11 p.m. Eastern right here on Fox Sports 1 and Fox Sports Go. Defensively, Providence has been in that 2-3 zone the majority of the game. it would be interesting to see if they come out of that and maybe mix it up with the man-to-man -to, -man to prevent those gaps and those openings that we've seen Marquette take advantage of the last few minutes. Providence and Cotton, excuse me, 7 of 7 from the line, 12 points. Two-point lead for the Friars. Burton, nice feed for Gardner and blocked by DeRozier. And Providence comes away with it. And a great job by the defensive front line. DeRozier using his side. Cotton three. And Marquette the rebound. Mayo forcing it. Mayo got the rebound. Camille Wilson looks back to Buzz Williams says, slow it down, fellas. Marquette is just a scrappy team. I mean, they out hustle you. They, you they know, make the game physical. And, and, you know, when they miss shots, they're usually going to get the loose ball because they're scrappy. And they get those 50-50 balls to keep the possessions alive. So Providence with a two-point lead. You're watching Fox Sports 1, your exclusive home for the entire Big East tournament. When tonight they get to the 20-win mark, a step closer to moving to fourth place in the league. Georgetown, a big win tonight. They have enough power conference wins or power team wins when you talk about Creighton, VCU, Michigan State, Kansas State. Those are quality wins, but they still have to move up the ranks in the win column for the regular season in the Big East. A lot of things could change between now and next week. You saw that graphic. Marquette's eight straight seasons in the tournament, sixth longest active streak. Marquette, one of just four teams to go to the Sweet 16 in three straight seasons as we get a whistle and a foul. We'll go against Marquette. And that's what makes it fun, Chris. I mean, this is this is the time of the year where things can change day to day. And obviously, we're coming down to the last week of the regular season. A lot of possibilities. I think the Big East gets at least four teams into the tournament, the NCAA tournament, possibly five with, you know, how the Big East tournament plays out. That was an offensive foul on Burton. So now Providence with it off the turnover. Cotton three. Go! Great execution. They ran Cotton off a down screen. He got separation that allowed him to knock down the shot. He's got 15. Jamil Wilson trying to answer. Cannot and Cotton with a rebound. He said he'd be more assertive, Tariq, in the second half. Finding his. And he is. Leader. Low goal from Hinton. And that's.
Matsu. Marquette turnover. Well, watch Bryce Cotton move without the ball. He comes off a kind of a cross down screen. Great angle by DeRozier with the pick. Cotton comes right off of it, gets separation, and knocks down the three. Uh, you see Bryce Cotton with 10 points here in the second half. Got nine points on the free throw line in this game. And running Mayo off uh, on the baseline of that zone, trying to get him to get into that short corner with Gardner at the high post now. Burt rebounded by Henson. Well, the purpose of that zone is to force Marquette to shoot contested jump shots and hope they miss and rebound. The zone has been very effective for Providence here tonight. Fortune. Yes. Another good execution of screen to screener. Fortune sets the back screen and then gets screen. Pops out. First point for Josh Fortune and a timeout for Marquette. And the Dunkin' Donut Center here in Providence in a well, fever Watson, pitch. This is a screen to screen and play a back screen and then another re screen. All by fortune, moving without the ball. Great execution, great timing and spacing allows him to get a nice clean shot. Fortune, the sophomore, 49% from three over his last seven games. Late to the party here, but Providence gets a seven point lead with 9.37 to go in the second half. Hey Chris, this place is rocking, man. It is. I can barely hear myself. <laughs> Dunkin' Donuts Center here in Rhode Island. The Dick Gavitt Court began playing at this place when it was called the Providence Civic Center back in 1972. Just over 12,000 fit in here. It was renamed the Dunkin' Donuts Center in 2001. Dick Gavitt, a great coach here with the Friars in the 70s. Jimmy Dave Gavitt. Dave Gavitt Court here at Providence. There'd Providence no hasn't big... been to the tournament, though, since 2004. That's right. There'd be no Big East if there wasn't Dave Gavin. And obviously, he's looking down, certainly proud of the way Providence is playing, the way this new Big East was formed in his first year. Thomas can't hit a three. Their best three-point shooter is without one tonight. Well, you know, Marquette is now settling for jump shots. They're getting away from their game plan. They want to attack the paint, whether it's through the high post, the high low action, or dribble penetration. This 2-3 zone has got them kind of in a bind where now they're not getting the ball in the paint as well. Gardner. Nice feed blocked by DeRozier. Rebound though to Marquette here. DeRozier's been big off the bench. He hasn't scored the ball, but defensively, he's been a presence. Big literally and figuratively. Mayo. Driving oh. shot, and Wilson missed the cleanup. Here comes Cotton. The kick out. Fortune three. Oh. And it starts with a push by Cotton. Great job by Cotton in transition, but defensively, Prowess is allowed to have been, been able to get some block shots that have ignited their fast break. Great push off the dribble by Cotton. Draws the defense in. Fortune, wide open, driving kick basketball at his best. And the foul. Mayo fouled him after the shot, so Fortune at the line with a chance at a four-point play. And Providence has their biggest lead of the game. It's 11. And they're on their feet here in Providence. It's been a block party all game. The Rozier and Harris using their length, and we can't uh, we can't overstate how big the Rozier's been defensively with his seven foot frame, his ability to time shots and come from the weak side or as an all ball defender protecting the rim. Miss by 
have Derek Wilson. Carson DeRozier, a New Hampshire native, played his first two seasons at Wake Forest, sat out last year after transferring, grew up a Celtic fan, huge KG fan. This is his biggest sports throw when the Celtics raised the banner in 08. He was there, looking a little like KG in the interior. And now we get Gardner and Bats have to be separated by the officials here. In the last few minutes, Marquette has struggled on the offensive end. But defensively, they continue to pick up full court and pressure the basketball. The problem is now they have Providence in the bonus situation. You know what Providence does from the foul line. Best in the nation. Harris with it in the corner. Bats finds Fortune. 3 0. Fortune got his own missed and lost it. And it's grabbed by Hinton and he got fouled. They get it on here. Well, Hinton did a good job of. They get that on Wilson. That'll be his fourth. Well, Dante Hinton, 17 points, 10 rebounds. Can't hit. Right, he's been huge. That's their first missed free throw of the game. For the Friars, Hinton has been aggressive the entire game. And well, when he puts pressure on the defense, it takes pressure off of Cotton, who has to do so much ball handling. So he misses not one, but two. First two missed free throws in this game for Providence. The Rozier back in on the defensive end. Mayo. Wilson. Gardner inside. Force one up. And a foul. They did Providence. not give Wilson that foul, by the way, so he has three. Providence offensively starting to really get going with the jump shooting, the driving kick basketball, and the transition game. Take a look at tonight's game summary for Marquette. Deontay Burton, the freshman, has 10 points off the bench and a big rebounding edge for the Golden Eagles, while Providence Bryce Cotton, as you pointed out, Tariq, would look to be more aggressive offensively in the second half after getting other guys started in the first half. And he has 10 of his 15 points here in the second half as Providence has the lead by 10. Well, you're not going to stop Cotton from scoring because he's the primary ball handler. He never goes out the game. And even if he's struggling from the field, he's going to draw attention and draw fouls. And he's going to the foul line seven times. He's made all seven. So he's a dangerous weapon. And obviously, Cooley wants to ride his back in his final seven minutes. Devontae Gardner, a 78% free throw shooter. Connects on the first. Gardner, the leading scorer and rebounder for Marquette, has been pretty quiet. I mean, he's had some flashes of aggressiveness, but, you know, in terms of consistent flow, he has not been able to get in the flow. A lot of that has to do with the defensive strategy of swarming and making him play in the crowd under the rim. Gardner averages 15 a game. He's got eight in this one. Was held to eight on Sunday in the loss to Villanova. Now fortune for Providence. Hinton works it up top to Cotton. Bats. Hinton try to pass deflected. And Marquette comes up with a turnover. Great Ninth ball turnover. By Wilson. Derek Wilson, the junior, with the high school, right? One state south in Connecticut. Providence knows Marquette doesn't want to shoot the three, so they're protecting the paint. And a force there by Jameel Wilson. And this 2-3 zone has really frustrated Marquette the entire night. Oh, 
fortune now. Played tightly by Mayo. Harris. Stitting. Bats. Can't hit. Rebounded by Derek Wilson from Marquette. Trying to push the tempo. Wilson lost it. Gathers it again. He'll reset. Very few transition bats by Marquette. Providence done a pretty good job of accomplishing one of their keys tonight. Defensive transition. No easy baskets. Gardner. Got a muscle one up. And that time the backboard blocked him and then a foul call. You know, Gardner doesn't get much lift, but what he does is he uses his body and his size to jump into you. This could be the fourth foul on Kadeem Bats. And Gardner's always looking for contact, and it wasn't the first, right? It was the second. He got him on the arm. Yeah, it was the second attempt, and you know, Bats, big part of this front court, has to be careful now with four fouls. Gardner hits. DeRozier going to check into the game, replacing Bats with the four fouls with 5.58 to go. There's plenty of time left. You know, Buzz Williams is used to playing in grind out games, playing from behind. He's not, this is not foreign to him. He, he, he knows how to get his team to grind out and stay the course. Two possession game. It's a six point lead for the Friars. Ten for Gardner. Cotton being denied the ball by Derek Wilson. Now he gets it. Wilson making him work. They're trying to face guard Cotton and make him give the ball up so he can't get it back. Cotton over the shoulder. They can't finish. Twice they can't hit. Out of bounds. And this will stay with Providence. What a look by Cotton as he drives baseline over the head. No look. That would have been on Fox's li Fox Sports Live's top ten plays. That could have been the one. Could have been the one. You're right. And now that's a five-second count. And a turnover. That's Great. their tenth turnover. Good job by Gardner on the inbounds as a defender. Marquette goes on defensive runs. Yeah, the team exactly. go on scoring spurts. They they will go on defensive runs. That's what they're trying to do right now. That's a great point. And it, it, that's why they kind of sneak up on you because it may not come from the offensive. Oh, line. rejected again by DeRozier. Cotton. Double clutch. Won't go. Marquette's got it. They're going to push. Mayo puts on the brakes. Burton. The fadeaway over DeRozier. Can't hit. And now Burton steals it back, but he stepped out of bounds. Another block. This time, Mayo probing the defense, but again, DeRozier, who's really been the enforcer down low with this ability to change shots and block shots. Providence with 11 block shots. 11 block shots for the Friars. Providence with the lead. You see it's a tying a season high. At this point in the game, Providence wants to stay aggressive, but they also want to work some clock. And there's a balance there where they're not stalling, but they're trying three. to make the ball move. Will go. Caught in the rebound. Three. Oh, halfway down, and it came out. Man, that would have took the house down if you knocked that down. Mayo connecting. Big swing right there as Marquette closes to within three. They're not going to go away. I mean, Mayo is a guy who plays with a lot of confidence. He doesn't hesitate. He knows he's out there to score the ball. Now Harris handling. And Cotton has it. And this is when Bryce is at his best with the ball screen action or the one-on-one -on -one where they kind of flatten the floor and let him make a play on one-on-one -on -one play. Here he is. Foul on the drive. Marquette answering back. Big bucket for Mayo. Getting tight down the stretch. Well, thanks, Donna Marquette on an 8-0 run.
to get within three with 3.47 to go in the second quarter. Marquette stifling Providence with their defense right now to get back in the game. Well, Buzz Williams is telling this team, let's just keep it close. We don't need to have the lead right now. We have three minutes and 47 seconds left. Let's keep it close. Let's rely on our defense and our physical play. Stay out of foul trouble. You definitely don't want to keep putting Providence on the foul line, but if you can get multiple stops, you have a chance to win this game. Cotton at the line. The free throw is no good. They have not scored in five minutes in this game, Providence. Talked about Marquette, that eight nothing run. Some teams that could happen in a minute. This is the last five. And Cotton breaks the run. He's got 16, 11 in the second half. Mayo had a big three moments ago. John Dawson in the game because Derek Wilson's got four fouls and now a foul inside against Providence. They'll get it on Harris. Mayo's been the most effective penetrator for this Marquette team. Probing in defense, good size and good quickness at about 6'3 to get in those gaps, put the pressure on the defense and draw the foul. Harris with four fouls. Mayo at the line where he's an 81% free throw shooter. Mayo's had some ups and downs this Marquette team, but certainly playing his best basketball since he's been there. There's a big second half guy, makes that free throw. He had a three to force overtime against Georgetown this year. Where he had 10 points in the final 34 seconds to force OT against Villanova back in January. 17 in the second half to rally from 10 down against Butler on February 4th, and he's had some big buckets here in the second half. Trying to come back on Providence. And makes two big free throws, and Marquette has cut the lead to two. And it allows them to set up their full court press. They haven't forced many turnovers with this, but that's not the point. They want to slow Providence down. So by the time they get into the half court, they don't have as much time on the shot clock. Fortune handling. Fortune's got it back. It's stolen away by Gardner. Great job by Gardner fighting over the top without fouling to get that steal. 11th Providence turnover. Marquette. Can Tyre take the lead with a three? Mayo. Beautiful feed for Gardner and we're tied. Dribble penetration off the gaps. Mayo making the play off the dribble. Nice wraparound pass to Gardner. They've erased an 11-point second-half deficit. Powering inside, a 26-10 paint advantage. Harris. Hits. He's been quiet. He's got four points. Providence regains the lead. Offensive foul away from the ball against Gardner. First foul on Gardner. Buzz doesn't agree. Let's see what you think. Well, they're going to call. Well, he the arm up, extended man. his arm, and when you make contact above the neck, even if it's inadvertent, they have to make that foul call. That's a point of emphasis this year. Crowd getting involved now. Providence up by two. Ed Cool is just going to flatten it out with a high ball screen and allow Cotton to create. Gardner's got him in a switch. That's going to be an offensive foul if it's on, is it on bats? Looks like yeah. it's on Cotton. No, it's on Cotton. Out of control, offensive foul, and great adjustment by Marquette. Collapsing the defense, making Cotton drive into a crowd. Cotton jumped up in the air with no one to pass to. Gets called for the offensive charge. Can't leave your feet, right, unless you got a plan. And he tried to hit Bass for the screen and roll, but by the time he tried to deliver the ball, the defense had already rotated. Wilson back in with the four fouls. Number 12 here for Marquette. Mayo three. Oh, Mayo's hitting big shots here in the second half. And Marquette has their first lead since it was 4-2. That's just a big-time shot by Mayo, who's been in a good rhythm. The entire game looking for his shot aggressively. 
Off the catch. Now Cotton the senior on senior night in Providence. What has he got in him? Can't hit. And Marquette the rebound, and then Cotton still away. Oh, and he can't finish. Mail the rebound. You have to love the fight of Cotton. He stayed with the play. Took a chance. He could have pulled that out, but I'll live with that if I'm Ed Cooley. You, you want your player, your best player, to play with his instincts. He plays every second, and he's got more energy than anybody on the floor. Marquette really working the ball side to side, trying to probe the defense with the ball reversal. Being patient, using clock. Mayo slid the foot and turns it over. Mayo One of the few things Mayo hasn't done well here in the second no, half. Well, he's, he's played a great game, and this is, you know, a junior guard who's come off the bench and given him a huge lift, making huge shots the entire game. Providence used to playing close games. Nine games decided by four points or less this season. They're five and four in those games. With under a minute to go, and here's what is at stake. These two teams battling for the fourth spot in the Big East. Well, we're coming down. This is the last week of regular season play. Providence, if they're able to win this game, they go into fourth place in the regular season for the Big East with 20 wins and 10 conference wins. St. John's right behind him at 9-8. and eight. Marquette, also a 9-win team, trying to move up the ranks. But their strength of schedule, not great at 53. And Georgetown with a big win tonight, moving up the ladder with the win versus trade tonight. Marquette will finish with St. John's on Saturday while Providence finishes up at Creighton. Coming up next, it's Arizona State taking on Oregon. Right here on Fox Sports 1. Chris Carino and Tariq Turner with you in what has been a great atmosphere on senior night in downtown Providence, Rhode Island. What a great way to finish up the career of Bryce Cotton and Kadeem Bats in front of the home faithful. And I think if you're Ed Cooley in Providence, you want something going to the rim. Your team shoots great foul shots. You have the advantage with the way Bats has played tonight, more so in the first half, but he's a force down low. And Cotton with his ability to create for his teammates, whether it's hitting the fortune or score the ball himself, he put the pressure on the defense by attacking. The second leading scorer in the Big East, leading assist man in the Big East, has it in his hands. Now Harris. Working around, it's Hinton. Cotton. Trying to get inside of Bats. They swing it instead of Fortune. Bats, seven to shoot. Fortune, three. That wasn't the play they called up, but inside-outside action. They tried to get the ball down low to Bats. Good patience by the big man. He didn't feel comfortable taking the shot. And Mayo helped a little bit too low. Once he dropped down Mayo, he left Fortune, lost sight of him for a second. Hey, uh, I'm sorry, Fortune rotates down to the corner and knocks down a huge three ball. And a chance at a four-point play for Josh Fortin, the soft fortune, the sophomore out of Hampton, Virginia. The foul on Mayo, his third. What a shot. And he connects a four-point play for the sophomore. Good fortune for Providence. They lead by three. And now with a three-point lead, this is all about strategy. You know, Ed Cooley knows Marquette's not a great three-point shooting team. So now the decision is, do you take the chance and try to be solid on your defense, let the clock wind down and foul them on the floor to prevent them from getting a three up? Yep. A lot of decisions to be made. Let's see what happens. Well, it's certainly a question as it becomes later on. If you take a look at the game summary tonight, 
Todd Mayo, another huge second half for him. He is a second half player. 17 points and 10 rebounds. They trailed by 11 in this half, came back to take the lead. See the defense of Providence, 11 block shots. But Providence up by three on the four point play by Josh Fortune. And obviously Mayo being a playmaker, the way he's played, you want the ball in his hands, use some kind of high ball screen action to give him some space. Providence on the defensive end is gonna show some full court pressure back in a man to man. They're gonna come out of that two three zone, switch everything. Any kind of dribble handoff, any kind of ball screen, you can't take a chance to allow any airspace. You want to run them off the line and make them put the ball on the floor. Well, here's the resume for the Friars. 19 and 10, looking for their first 20 win season since the last time they went to the tournament in 2004. And on the other side of things, Marquette, just 2 and 10 versus top 50 teams. Marquette will finish out the year against St. John's on Saturday on the uh, at home at the Mimo Harris Bradley Center while Providence finishes up at Creighton. Three point lead for the Friars. Marquette with the ball. Shot clock is off. Mayo. And he's fouled shooting a three. This is unbelievable. I mean. <laughs> This is the third time we've seen a guy fouled shooting a three here tonight. And, and Mayo off the dribble handoff. They don't switch it fast enough, and Fortune kind of falls asleep. And once he realizes that Mayo is going to elevate, he's out there too late, gets a piece of his elbow. That's a bad foul. 81% free throw shooter. He sinks the first. He's got two more coming. 18 points, 13 in the second half for the younger brother of NBA star O.J. Mayo. This is Todd Mayo, and he makes the second. He'll get one more. This has been a game of runs, and it's really been hard to kind of say who's had the momentum because it's been a back-and-forth game the entire 40 minutes. And three free throws made by Mayo to tie it up at 59. Now Providence and Bryce Cotton, the senior, in his last home game in his Providence career, has the game in his hands. Well, he's going to the rim. He's not going to settle for the jump shot. He's going to get to the basket. Cotton three. Loose. Marquette's got it and will go. A replay. That was <laughs> that was unreal. <laughs> All right, now Gardner's gonna get the rebound. Watch for the Ellie. No, that's no not good. gonna count. It's no good. No good. That no way good. that could that count. Only took one review oh. for the officials. Wow. <laughs> Look at this. I know it doesn't count, but he still made the shot. That's unbelievable. That would have been the one on that Fox Sports <laughs> 1 if that had counted. No question. Wow. And comes away bleeding. This is the first time we've heard the Dunkin' Donuts Center quiet. Relatively quiet. Relatively quiet. <laughs> what a wild finish. Now let's go back to L.A. and Dot Bell. Dot? Woo! That is absolutely amazing. On right now, Fox Sports 2, Oregon and Arizona State. They have tipped off. You can also catch that game on the Fox Sports Go app. Once they are done in Providence, we will have that for you here on Fox Sports 1. Uh, it is March officially when you see shots like that, even though it didn't count. What are you expecting in overtime? I'm expecting that neither one of these teams is going to foul three-point shooters, hopefully, for a period of time. <laughs> Obviously, it worked in Providence's favor when they got the four-point play. They returned the favor to Marquette by getting the three-pointer. Uh, obviously, Gardner and, and Cotton, the two big stars, going blow for blow here. In overtime, it is an amazing game we are watching so far right now. Let's send it back to Chris and Tariq at the Dunkin' Donuts Center.
And guys, Marquette two and two in overtime this season. Providence two and three. Big East basketball is presented by New York Life, the assist official sponsor of overtime. New York Life getting a chance to sponsor overtime because Gardner's three-quarter court heave came just a half a second too late. All right, this is a, this is a, I don't even know what to describe it. This is one of those games that's going down in, well, in listen. Both, you know, historic, historic archives. I mean, this is Big East basketball yeah. at its best right now. A dog fight has been physical. We've seen block shots. We've seen multiple guys step up. We've seen Cotton heat up in the second half. We've seen Bats get hot in the first half. We've seen Mayo come off the bench and give them a huge lift with his shot making ability. A lot of guys have stepped up throughout this game. Mayo's three free throws after he was fouled attempting a three tied this game. That was after Josh Fortune's four point play had given Providence a three point lead. The Golden Eagles two and two in overtime. Providence is two and three. And Chris O'Toole gets another chance to win it. A jump ball. Won 25 out of 29 opening tips. And he wins again. Important to note foul trouble. Bats, Harris, and Fortune all with four fouls for Providence. Derek Wilson with four for Marquette. Providence. Marquette's gotten 46 points off their bench. Providence goes back into the 2-3 zone. Jamil Wilson been quiet and starts the overtime with a bucket. Good possession by Marquette. They get the ball exactly where they want in the high post. Wilson makes a nice jump hook. Nine for Jamil Wilson, three under his season average. Hedden trying to force, blocked by Thomas. Hedden got it back, and he got fouled inside. And it's O'Toole. Hinton does a really good job of following up his shot, whether it's a block or a missed shot. He never just drops back. He stays with the play. He's looking for contact here. He doesn't get it. Good defense with the help side blocked by Thomas, but a good quick second jump by Hinton to recover the possession. Third foul in Otule. 79% free throw shooter is Hinton as he connects on the first. And Gardner gets patched up and comes in along with John Dawson. You know, at this point, we never really ask him whether Cotton gets tired because he's an Iron Man. Yeah. He hasn't come out of a game in like 13 games straight, including overtime. You have to wonder about fatigue, though, because he hasn't attacked the rim like we would have expected in the last few minutes of the regulation. Free throw is missed. He's played 50 minutes in a game three times in his career. He's played every second of this one. 18 for Hinton, by the way, but only four in the second half. They're trying to move the ball around the perimeter to get an opening to enter the ball through the high post or down low to Gardner. Mayo. Hi, Archer. Won't go. Gardner fighting. Third chance. Won't go. Gardner still staying with it. And finally will go to the free throw line. This is Biggie's bully ball right here. Gardner. Just bullies his way down low, uses his strength and upper body size to just muscle his way up and draw the contact. You know, Providence has had a trouble blocking him out under the rim. That's not the last easy. couple minutes, he, he, he really requires two guys to block him out, but yeah. then you have to worry about another guy like a Wilson Coming over from the weak side. Gardner, 7 of 7 from the line. Bats comes back in for DeRozier. Such a advantage to have a big man like Gardner that shoots foul shots and such a high clip shooting in the mid-80s percentile in Big East play. Misses his first free throw of the game. You jinxed him. I jinxed him, yeah. That happens sometimes. You see 17 offensive rebounds for Marquette and 11 second chance points. Now a foul on Dawson. Good recognition by Fortune. 
You know, he went away from the ball screen because the defense was expecting him to use it. Fortune's been aggressive. I mean, you know, you're talking about uh, another guy stepping up for Providence off the bench. Fortune, the last seven games, averaging 11 points, five rebounds. They need him to take some pressure off of Cotton mm -hmm. and be aggressive with his shot making ability. And he hits 11 for Fortune, They're including the four point play that put Providence up by three in the final minute. Over to see Todd Mayo hit four, uh, three free throws to tie it and send it to overtime eventually after Providence had a last shot that missed and then Gardner three quarter court shot went but it came just a second after the final buzzer tied up in downtown Providence in overtime fourth place in the Big East on the line Dawson the freshman the big time drive and the lane was open by Gardner setting a nice screen on the top of the zone, creating a lane for Dawson to get into the gaps and finish. Dawson playing because Derek Wilson has four fouls. Got six points. Harris fights one up, and he'll go to the line. And yeah, we'll see good zone offense by Marquette. They set a screen, Garner does. Unfortunately, kind of like if it was man to man, gives Dawson the lane to get into the gap and make the nice runner off the glass. Tyler Harris. Also has a brother in the NBA, Tobias Harris. Out of Long Island, finished up high school in Newark at St. Benedict's, makes the free throw. And Harris has always been to me like an X factor for this Providence team because of his versatility. He's one of the more uh, talented guys that can make plays off the dribble with his size of 6'9", kind of an inside-outside stretch four. And a great free throw shooter. Part of why they lead the nation. Six for Harris. Tied again. Great atmosphere here at the dunk. Dawson can't hit. Rebound Providence. They ran the same exact play. The high ball screen by Garner. Dawson this time a little bit more pressure with the contest by Providence. A foul on Mayo trying to stay with Cotton. Which is not easy because Cotton never stops. He's constant movement. When he's not, ha when he doesn't have the ball, they're setting stagger screens and down screens to get him some space. Four fouls on Mayo. You talk about the Cotton comparisons. You think of guys like Allen Iverson, Rip Hamilton, play minutes and never seem to get tired. Of running off screens as the free throw is good by Cotton. All right, he's in excellent condition and. The point I made earlier about him not attacking the rim, he's not showing any signs of fatigue, but I think a couple times he settled for jump shots when he could have taken it stronger. And look at a run after that miss, but Gardner able to keep it and save it. Marquette with the ball down one. Derek Wilson back in. Gardner draws a crowd. Mayo with five to shoot. Contact and a block. That's a great throw for Mayo. Mayo off the ball reversal. There was no closeout. And he gets to the rim again off the dribble. He's done this all second half, making plays and through the top of that zone. And Tariq, that's the fifth foul on Kadeem Bats. The senior in his final home game has fouled out with 12 points. A thousand point score in his career. Most improved player of the Big East last season. Now he's had a great career and he's one of the hardest workers on his Providence team. Always staying after Extra hours to do work with the big the, with the big men coaches of Providence. I've watched him throughout this preseason leading up to the at the end of the summer put in hours of work on his footwork, his jump shot, his jump hook. 
And the free throw is good for Mayo. He is six for six from the line. 21 points. Man, oh, he missed that. First missed free throw for Mayo. Comes at a big spot as the game remains deadlocked at 65. Providence doesn't play many players off their bench, so they're always going to get outscored with bench, but Marquette's bench contributing 50. Fortune three goes down. How's that for good fortune? That's what you call a shooter's touch. And again, Fortune coming off the screen. Gets the separation. 15 for Fortune. And Buzz wants a timeout. There's been great execution by Providence in crunch time moments. Fortune is really taking another step with his ability to make big shots. With Providence up here in overtime, we'll send it back across the country at Don Bell. All right, guys, thank you. Over on Fox Sports 2 right now and the Fox Go app, it is a Pac-12 battle between Oregon and Arizona State. The Ducks on top 15-4 right now. Once they're done in Providence, we'll bring this game to you on Fox Sports 1. But for now, back to Chris and Tariq in Providence. So Providence goes up by three. Josh Fortune with some huge shots in the second half in overtime. Well, they've been running Fortune and cutting off down screens all night, and DeRozier has been the main guy setting the screens. Gets his feet set. Fortune comes off it with separation and gets a nice bounce. He's living good right now. He had that four-point play at the end of a regulation. And he's got Providence's last seven points. Giving him the lead. Every time he makes a shot, it's a big shot. And Providence with a three-point edge, a minute 22 to go in overtime. A lot of basketball to be played with the game with this kind of tempo. And, you know, Buzz Williams is going to try to draw something up for his playmaker, and obviously Mayo's been the go-to guy on the perimeter. Very effective off the of ball reversal and ball screens getting into the paint. But Wilson and Gardner have to be able to make themselves available in that high post short corner area so they can finish. And now Kadeem Batts fouls out of the game. Limits your options for Providence. Even though Fortune has stepped up, Cotton gets a lot of attention in late game situations. Well, this is one of those games where obviously limited depth for Providence. But the good thing is, Harris has come on the last few minutes. He's more aggressive, looks more confident. DeRozier's been more of a factor on the defensive end. But Hinton is kind of a hybrid 3-4, although he's undersized, has been strong taking the ball to the rim all game. Providence, we mentioned the overtime records at 2-3. and three. They've played three double overtime games this season. Marquette with it, out of the timeout. A minute 16 to go in overtime. Providence now in man-to-man. -man. Wilson. Mayo. Thomas, three. Scored his first of the game. How Thomas accounts for more, uh, about half of their three-pointers, and that's the first one. And what a time for it. Well, he got open because of the dribble penetration off the ball screen. Mayo again making a play off the dribble. Nice drive and kick. Thomas with a huge shot. A 39% three point shooter gives Marquette a tie with Providence. Cotton's got it. Step back and hits. It's a big time shot, and he was determined to get a clean look. He got exactly to his spot. And knocks it down. 19 for Cotton. 14 coming since halftime. Now Providence goes back into a 2-3, so they continue to mix up their defenses. Mayo has to be the playmaker for Marquette. Mayo 3. Good! Marquette back in front. Is this serious? I mean, what are we doing here? Oh. I want to get out here and play, man. Todd Mayo, we talked about him being a second-half performer. He's got 24 in the game. This has got to be his best game that I've seen him play. I've never seen him make more big 
crunch time shots that he has tonight. 19 have come since halftime. Shot clock off, cotton three. DeRozier had it. And a foul against Marquette. Foul goes against Jameel Wilson. Well, just watch Mayo here. You know, he does a great job of curling off the backside. Good screen by Gardner. And Mayo, there was no hesitation there. You saw Catch it. and shoot. DeRozier was pointing to Mayo. Somebody to go get him. Nobody followed him to the wing. Jameel Wilson turned his left ankle that time, came up limping, reties his shoe, and now free throws for DeRozier. He is a 66% free throw shooter. First trip to the line tonight. Huge free throws here with 12 seconds to go. Tied up. Well, that's <laughs> Providence has a bench point. Nothing bigger than that one. And DeRozier yep. has been solid all game long. 53 to 1. It'll be 53 to 2 if he makes this free throw. And he can't, and we're tied still. Marquette's got it. Final seconds. Shot clock off. Mayo. Who else? One goes. Wilson. No. Double overtime. <laughs> I love it. This is Big East basketball. This is what we want going into March Madness, the Big East tournament. This is a 12-round prize fight. Ed Cooley and Buzz Williams. It's senior night. Let the home folks see the seniors a little bit more, a little extra. Let's go back to L.A. Don, we need a break. Take it, Don. All right, guys, thank you. Uh, have you caught your breath? Uh, that <laughs> game is absolutely ridiculous. We now have double overtime. Some miraculous plays in this game. Big time plays on both sides of the ball. Marquette, obviously, with a huge play, getting that three in the corner. Uh, Fortune's come up with a couple of big baskets late in this game. It's just a great game going back and forth. And it's not one of those where both teams are missing shots and it's a close game. Both teams making big baskets. As we take a look at what's going on right now with Providence, obviously, uh, now in double overtime. This game, very important for both teams. Meanwhile, a Pac-12 game going on right now on Fox Sports to Oregon and Arizona State. The Ducks looking for their sixth straight win. They're on top 15 to nine. We'll bring you that game once they are done in Providence. Meanwhile, let's go back to Providence with Chris and Tariq. And Providence, the first team in Big East history to go to four double overtime games in conference play. They're two and three, I should say, in double overtime this year. They lost to Seton Hall, they beat St. John's, and they lost to Villanova in double overtime. So one and two in double overtime this season. And we mentioned Bryce Cotton three times in his career has played an entire 50 minutes. I would expect him to do the same here. No question. I mean, he's, you know, he's not coming out the game. There's, there's too much at stake, and he's their most important player. He's central to everything they do, and on the other side, Another great guard performance for Marquette. Todd Mayo has been phenomenal with his ability to make plays at the most needed time. Otule with a chance to win yet another tip. And he does. He's 3-0 tonight. So we begin the second overtime. Marquette with the ball. Remember, Kadeem Batts has fouled out of the game for Providence. Mayo, Thomas, Dawson the freshman. And the, the shifting of side to side offensive ball movement by Marquette is created to allow them to get the ball into Neil Wilson post. with a turnaround. And we've seen him do that a few times in overtime. The first overtime he did it, now he does it again, flashing to the high post, knocking down the mid range. Bryce Cotton has played every second. Fortune fumbles it. Cotton with it. And they're switching everything on Cotton. They don't want to give him any airspace off the screen and roll. DeRozier rolling. 
Nice layup inside. Good patience. He used a shot fake because O'Toole was going to go for the block, gathered himself, and finished. First field goal for Carson DeRozier. Wilson finds O'Toole, swallowed up, got it back blocked again. DeRozier's getting a huge presence inside defensively for Providence. Cotton with it. Sizing up Jamil Wilson, he'll back it out. Well, he likes that hesitation move and kind of a shot fake while he's still dribbling. Oh, big pull up. Knocks it down. And he did exactly what I described. The shot fake with the lift of the head to create space. As Wilson had to respect his driving ability, he pulls up on the dime. 21 for Cotton. Mayo blocked. DeRozier again. Uh, DeRozier's been a force. He's protected the rim as well as anybody I've seen this year. Rotating. Well, they only have him officially for five blocks. I feel like he's gotten that's more. That's got to be wrong. He's got to have more than five. I mean, he's, I can think of at least six that he's had in the second half. <laughs> Thomas can't hit. Mayo saves it, but for Cotton. And then a steal from behind by Derek Wilson. What a play by the junior. The, the amount of effort plays we're seeing in this game is just phenomenal. There's been no shortage of... Well, Mayo, he had to go into the crowd to save that ball, and he got a little shaken up. And it, these two teams are playing as hard as I've seen any team play in this Big East year in terms of 50-50 balls, maximizing the effort. Watch Mayo go after this. What a save. Look at that effort. And then hits his head on the seat. Wow. Mayo has been phenomenal uh, I mean, since halftime. These guys are leaving everything on the court. No matter who wins this or is, loses, this, did there will be no regret. start, Tariq? It feels like it. It feels, it feels like, like it started. It <laughs> feels like we should be at the Garden. Great intensity, great atmosphere. Terrific way to end the whole portion of their season here in Providence. Bill Wilson is the guy that's the focal point now. At the high post, he's looking to... Mayo three. Too strong. Wilson. Thomas three. Got him. Made him pay. The shot fake as Fortune flies at him was a great decision by Thomas as he knocks down another big deep three. 82% of his made field goals come from three. Both of his made field goals here tonight from three and both in overtime. That shot missed by Hinton and Marquette the rebound. Marquette with a ball and a one-point lead. We're in the second overtime here in downtown Providence, Rhode Island. Thomas. Jameel Wilson handling. Derek Wilson turns it over. And the patience by Thomas. Off the kick out, nice shot fake. Gathers himself, and he's a guy who likes to shot fake at the three and then pull up for the three. Big time shot. He's made almost half of the team's threes this year. Two big threes. Marquette with a one point lead. Possession arrow favors Providence. Oh! Cotton stood up inside. And a foul against Marquette. And that's a set play for. Cotton, kind of an ISO Allen Iverson play where they run you off a cross screen to get you isolated on the wing. As he catches it, he takes the angle, drives strong to the baseline, puts the pressure on the defense. He knew he was going to get fouled. Cotton, 9 for 11 from the line, an 85% free throw shooter. In every second of this game, leads the nations in minutes played. As they get Dawson in for Wilson, they protect Wilson. He's got four fouls. Cotton makes two. One point lead for the Friars. With a minute 31 to go in the second overtime. 
Buzz Williams, who has taken eight, I should say six straight teams to NCAA tournament. Let's send it over to Don Bell in Los Angeles. All right, gentlemen, thank you. Right now we are in the first half in Eugene is Arizona State is visiting Oregon. Once that game is over in Providence, we will bring this to you here on Fox Sports 1. In the meantime, let's go back to P-Town with Chris and Tarek. Thanks, Todd. And there's no guarantee we won't see a third overtime here, Tariq. Hey, you the know way what? this one's gone, Providence with a one-point lead. Minute 31 to go in the second OT. And this is a great segue for the Big East Tournament, which is going to be another great atmosphere, environment at Madison Square Garden, the Mecca, greatest arena in the world. The Big East Tournament coming up. Both these teams have one Big East game remaining. And this month, the birthplace of legends is ready to rock as the Big East Tournament comes to America's new sports network, Fox Sports 1, live from Madison Square Garden. The only place to see the Big East Tournament is right here on Fox Sports 1 and Fox Sports Go. Chris Carino and Tariq Turner with you here in Providence. The Friars led by as much as 11 in the second half. Marquette turned up the defense. One of that defensive run. Remember they had that five-minute stretch yeah. where they didn't allow a point. And that's how Marquette got back in the game. That's exactly right. As we take a look at the game, so No, you're right. And you, you hit it right on the dot when you said that teams can go on runs a couple of different ways. Most times, you notice a team going on a run offensively by going on an 8 or 6 0 run. But Marquette goes on runs by getting multiple stops. And the next thing you know, Providence has gone five minutes without a field goal. That five minute stretch is what turned the game around, gave Mar Mar Marquette some momentum. And then at the end of regulation, what we saw was the four point play by Fortune. You give him a three point lead for Providence. Then Mayo fouled shooting a three. He would hit all three free throws to tie it. Providence had a chance to end it, could not. Gardner's three quarter court heave was just a tick late. And suddenly, through all that, we've ended up with a minute 31 to go in the second overtime. Providence with a one point lead. Kadeem Batts is fouled out of this game for Providence. I think it's a good adjustment by Cooley. He goes man to man. Switches it up out of the timeout, as you've said. He said that all game. Dawson, the freshman. Deflected back to Wilson. Inside of Gardner, and he lays it in. Great feed by Jameel Wilson. And that's who you want to have the ball. Gardner, very great, very good finishing down low in the rim. Perfect post entry pass. 15 for Gardner out of his season average. Cotton. Eighteen to shoot, fifty seconds to go. Fortune. This is Harris now. Hitting three. Won't go. May on the rebound. Oh, he's made so many big buckets. And they're coming up with a big rebound. Mayo with the front court now. There is a four-second difference shot to game clock. Marquette a one-point lead, and finally Providence has to foul. And they let some precious seconds get away there that time. Gardner, who was left wide open, but DeRozier overplayed him and slipped or lost his footing. Gardner taking advantage of that wide open lane. Well, Give excuse the puns here. Fortune had, Fortune had the fortunate bounce on the three moments ago that time. The misfortune of that ball being deflected right back to Jameel Wilson, and he fouls out of the game with 15 points. Right, he played a great game. He made huge shots. Kept him in the game with his three-point shooting. And just a sophomore who has a big, big mm. upside with this program. Ed Cooley very high on him. But the problem for Providence is now their lack of depth. And Marquette, in terms of wear and tear, they're in better shape. They play more guys. Providence really only wants to play six guys, sometimes seven. Yeah. Free throw is good. They have to bring Ted Bancroft into the game. Most minutes he saw on the floor was during the, the senior ceremony before the game. Mayo makes both free throws. 26 points, a career high. Eight of nine from the line. Marquette a three-point lead. 
And they're, they're pressuring Cotton with two guys to get the ball out of his hands and trap him. Nowhere to go. Finally calls a timeout with 17.7 seconds to go. With Fortune out and Bats out, they're not going to let Cotton beat them, or at least they're going to try not to let Cotton beat them. Uh, that's smart. I mean, Cotton is so dangerous, you know, and he's the guy you cannot leave alone. And when he's coming off a of ball screen, you want to make him go into a crowd. You want to blitz him with two guys or hedge high. In this case, with it being 17 seconds left, I think they're just going to switch it because you don't want to give him any airspace or any angle to drive. So with Fortune out of the game, it makes it even more difficult because now Bancroft was not known as a playmaker, not really familiar with this kind of pressure minutes right now or a pressure time situation. So someone else is going to have to step up if Cotton has to get rid of the ball. 17.7 seconds to go. The arrow favors Providence. We're in double overtime. Marquette with a three-point lead. Providence 8 of 24 from behind the arc in this game. Harris. Hinton. Hinton. Wiener goes with 9.3. One-point lead now for Marquette. Well, both coaches should be happy. You get a quick basket by Hinton. You try to go for the three, but instead you get it to the basket quickly. And Buzz Williams, you wanted to guard without fouling, make them run off the three-point line, make them put it on the floor. If you have to give up a basket, you'd rather give up a two than a three. The Big East standings up to the minute. Providence and Marquette, these two teams looking for sole possession of fourth place. And Providence looking for its 20th win. And obviously the 20 win mark is big. The 10 win mark is big because then it puts them right in the mix at fourth place tied with Xavier. And with Providence, their next game is at Creighton. McDermott's last game as a collegiate athlete. That's a tough place to win. Yeah, Creighton's You'd much rather get this win right here yeah. if you're at Cooley. Not that you can't win versus Creighton, but this is a game on your home court. Senior night, you want to take advantage of this. Marquette on the other end. Road Warriors, grind out mentality, physical play, a reflection of Buzz Williams. Marquette's got to get it inbound, and they do. Thomas, Cotton tries to tie him up, but he does, and Providence has the arrow. Wow. Great heads up play by Cotton. He immediately went for the ball without fouling, gets wow. the tie up. What a heads up play by the senior. And Thomas should have gotten rid of the ball quicker. Well, he held it just thinking, all right, they're going to foul me. They're going to foul me. I want to go to the line. And Cotton said, no, I'm going to tie you up. You have to know that Providence has a possession arrow. Here we go. Eight seconds to go. Plenty of time to get a clean shot. Cotton. Foul. I mean, Two this free is throws unbelievable. coming up. And, and at the nick of time, Tyler Harris lobs it so Cotton can catch it cleanly. And Wilson, a little bit too much contact. And he is fouled out of the game now, Derek Wilson. Just one point, three assists. And Cotton going to the line where he is 11 of 13 from the line. What a game. So they're in the double bonus, meaning two free throws here for Cotton. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, Ed Cooley yelling to a team, you don't want to foul. If Cotton makes these two foul shots, you go up one. You want to put some pressure on the ball so they can't get it up quickly. Tie game. He got so quiet in here on the free throw attempt, it's like he's attempting a putt. And if I'm Marquette, I want the ball in Mayo's hand. There it is. Providence takes the lead. Down to five. Mayo for the win. Go! Good hit. And Providence holds on. They win it in double overtime.
our Land Rover player of the game. That guy right there, he played every second of this game. Bryce Cotton. His free throws gave Providence the go-ahead points after his huge play defensively to tie up Jake Thomas and force the jump ball. And that was our player, play of the game, player of the game, Bryce Cotton. The Naismith watch list player, one of the best in the nation, one of the best in the Big East. Bryce Cotton on senior night, 25 points, seven rebounds, and nine assists. What a game for Tariq Turner. I'm Chris Carino. Let's send it over to L.A. And Don, what a game in Providence.